In the previous example we looked at two different approaches for calculating the expected value of the square root of x. So now we're going to look at a third different way of approaching the calculation of the expected value of some function g of x of a random variable. Here's the theorem. Let x be a random variable x defined on support script A with probability mass function f of x if x is discrete and probability density function f of x if x is continuous. The expected value of g of x where g is some function of x is the expected value of g of x is the sum over the support of g of x f of x if x happens to be discrete or it is the integral over the support of g of x f of x dx if x happens to be continuous. The key here is this function g of x winds up in front of the probability mass function if the random variable is discrete or in front of the probability density function if the random variable is continuous. Those are good when the sum or integral exist. When the sum or integral diverge, then the expected value is undefined. So as a quick example of using this result, let's say we want to calculate the expected value of the square root of x from the previous slide. Well, Monte Carlo is a way of getting a ballpark estimate but it will not give us the exact value. The transformation technique was a little bit tedious because you've got to go through the transformation of a random variable. Here this is much more direct. Now in the previous case we had a, a continuous random variable. It was the uniform 0, 1. So we're going to use this bottom part of the definition. This will be the integral over the support of x which is from 0 to 1 of g of x which in this case is the square root of x multiplied by f of x and you know that f of x is 1 for that particular distribution dx. Now if I go ahead and write this instead as x raised to the 1 half power dx I know all I have to do is raise it to the 1 power higher which is x to the 3 halves power then divide by 3 halves and that's the same as multiplying by 2 thirds and that will be evaluated from 0 to 1. When you plug in a 1 you get just 2 thirds and when you plug in a 0 you get 0 so we get 2 thirds which is exactly what we got by the analytic solution in the motivating example.